Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is step by step guide for simulating 4 bit up down counter using plonk divider in Vivado tool. Myself, Shilpa Rudravar, Assistant Professor, School of ENTC Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, RD Pune. So, moving ahead with this particular tool. So, before that, we have seen this clock divider concept how to write a code for clock divider. This clock divider test bench again using this clock divider will be uh, driving our up down counter which is of 4 bit and this is the code of uh, up down counter along with the test bench. So this we will be simulating in Vivado tool. So moving ahead with the Vivado tool. So here you need to click on Vivado 2014.4 whatever the version you are having then create new project. Next, give name, so any name you can give to your project, create your folder specifically in D drive instead of C or desktop, RTL project, do not specify at this time, you can click, whatever kit or hardware you are having in your lab or with you, you can select that. So we are having Nexus 4 DDR kit and that's why we are selecting that CSG324 that is the pins available, dash 1 is the speed grade and this is the hardware we are having. So this is required for the hardware implementation of this particular uh, counter. Once that has been done, this is what is the process window, this is code window, this is uh, sorry source window, this is the code window and this is the error window. So now inside this design source we need to create our Verilog file so we are clicking on add sources add or create design sources next give the name so here I'll be giving name as counter to the module next finished once that has been done as I told you we are having input as a clock then as a reset uh, again we are having input as a mode for up down counting then we are having counter as a output which is of 4 bit and that's why we have to click here and this is 3 down to 0 and there is one clk underscore d which is our divided clock so this is main clock which will be divided into clock underscore d so this will be in out because it is acting as a output of your clock divider but it is acting as an input to the counter and that's why it should be in out and okay anyhow i'll be copy pasting the code so, uh, so as to uh, complete that part in limited time span so this is what is the counter code which is partially getting created now meanwhile I have created this particular part also so over here I'll be switching to open project here I have already created a counter code so I'll be copy pasting that part from this project This is up down counter. This is the code. So I, I have already discussed this code with you. I have shared the video. The link of that I will be putting in the description box. So I will be updating these things. So here you are able to see that we are having clock, reset and mode as an input. Output is counter which is of 4 bit and in out which is clock underscore D. This is the variable we have declared for the counting operation. So this is range data type. This is what is the clock divider purpose. We are having this particular variable declared. There are two processes that is always block, that is first always block, that is for dividing the clock, and second always block is for counting operation that is up and down. So here you are able to see two always block that are there so first always block will be working on main clock which is of high frequency and here using this statement you are getting clock underscore d that is divided clock by changing this value you can change your clock frequency if this value is less means the high frequency clock will be getting if this is more you'll be getting low frequency clock so that way you can adjust this value total bits we can Maximum here we can put 28 because we have taken this 28. 
now over here there is mistake so i will changing this when there is a reset all 29 bits will be zero else at positive edge of clock and reset is zero it will be counting the values by one means it, the counting value is incremented by one and once that particular part is ended at last this is the line where the your clock is getting divided so a, a div underscore cnt bit zeroth bit will be assigning to d so by using this your clock is getting divided by two if i'm making it one it will be getting divided by four and if i'm making it two it will be getting divided by eight that way your value of clock is getting divided as you are going on going to increase that particular value inside this square bracket now always at passage clock underscore d here this block works on positive edge of main clock and here just keep that thing in mind that your counter is working on divided clock and that's why passage clk underscore d has been written this is very important or passage reset so I told you why reset is required because if you are not writing reset, so it will not be executing this part because do always block execute parallelly and whatever written inside that execute sequentially. But there is dependency of this always block on this because this clock underscore D is getting generated after this block is ex getting executed. And that's why if this is not executing at start, because in simulation both will not be running parallelly there will be a fraction of second uh, uh, one of the block will be executing uh, previous to another and that's why if that is the case your clock underscore d is not getting generated and if that is not getting generated meaning of that it will not performing this counting operation that is up and down counting and that's why you need to assign this reset that although clock underscore d is not there if reset is there you can go ahead with this operation and anyhow within that time this will be working and it will be generating clock underscore d so this is the reason now you have written here code that is active high reset where reset is one your counter will be resetted and when reset is zero at that time it will be performing your up down counting so if reset is zero and mode is one it will be performing up counting else when reset is zero and mode is zero it will be performing down counting once that has been done this particular value of count will be assigning to the counter variable because this is actual output of your counter which is of 4 bit and end module so for more detail you can go through the uh, link uh, pasted in the description box where i have explained each and every part of this code in detail now once that has been done i am saving this and if there is any error you'll be getting that is in this wind window there is no error so i'll be going to create test bench so this is what is add or new simulation sources create i'll be giving name as a tb okay it is um, named as a t finished and okay once that has been done when that has been done you will be able to see this simulation file is uh, getting created over here but it is still not linked with your up down counter now i'll be copy pasting this particular code again from this particular window where I have already created and related to this code also I have explained in the video so this is copy copied and this is pasted over here so in this code we have instantiates modules over here inputs are assigned as a register and outputs are assigned as a wire this is what is the initial block where clock is getting generated not of clock so 0101 it will be changing after every 10 time scale and here is the initial block which will be generating reset as well as mode so reset should be one for less amount of time and it should be zero for more amount of time so that's why it is mentioned and this is what end and end model so once i am saving this as the name is given properly over here so it will be linking to this uut so after saving you are able to see this particular test bench is getting linked with your uut once that has been done now you can go ahead with this elaborate design that is for for checking your gate level netlist you can click on this open elaborated design so there you will be getting net gate level netlist of your design created so here click on this particular default layout now this is in this way your circuit is getting created in the fpga 
so once that has been done again go to project manager and click on this test bench and go for run simulation now before running just keep the things in mind that in your code this value should not be very high keep it is it as 0 1 2 in this range because otherwise if you are making it 28 25 like that it will be taking more time for dividing and then on that divided clock your counter will be working so this should be very less for the simulation in hardware you can increase it because basic problem is with the hardware because high frequency clock is there for the hardware 100 megahertz and on that if your counter is working so blinking will be very fast so for simulation purpose keep it as low as possible so i have kept it zero once that has been done click over here and go for the simulation once that has been done you'll be getting the waveform for this so click on zoom fit now over here you are able to see you are able to see this waveform so adjust it properly first is clock then you can shift reset above that so click and drag again then you are having clock underscore d because when clock is applied it is converted into clock underscore d because of clock divider code and i'll be zooming it somewhat so that it will be easily visible so here you are able to see this is what is the reset when reset is one output is zero when reset is zero at positive edge of clock your clock division is happening so because of that count we have written zero so for two clock pulses of main clock you are getting single clock of clock division and as mode is 1 over here so it is counting up so for each clock pulse it is changing its count from 0 1 2 3 4 5 as on over here mode is 0 but at that time your clock underscore d is negative edge trigger and that's why it will not be executing that and for the next clock pulse of positive and the mode is 0 you will be getting clock uh, counter decrementing so this is 13 this is decremented to 12, 11, 10, 9, 8 as well, like this. So in this way, the mode will be performing, a mode is given, it will be performing up and down counting. And it works on divided clock. This is very important. Now once that has been done, once that has been done, what you need to do? You need to click on this and click on constraint file. Now over here, what you need to do? You need to write down the constraint. In this particular part, the constraint is already provided. So I'll be showing over here. Here constraint file is not created. This particular file is required for hardware implementation. So in the next session, we'll be seeing how to assign the constraint. Here for the clock pulse, you'll be assigning E3 pin. So in next session, we'll be seeing how to assign that XDC file along with how to execute that on the hardware. So thank you everyone. Thank you for the patience listening.